We are in beautiful Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Thank you for checking back in. This is the watch list for UFC 213, Nunez versus Shevchenko 2. John Anik, Mike Side, the best talent relations team in mixed martial arts. Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard. And let's get right to this rematch for the UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. Amanda Nunez, Valentina Shevchenko. First meeting went to Nunez, but there's bad blood now. I mean, this seems like legitimate dislike between these two women. There is. I was between them for a face-off, um, and you could just feel the anger yeah. coming off of And I don't know where it stems from, but it's real. So as far as this rematch is concerned, Shevchenko did rally late in that fight. Certainly a source of confidence for her going into the rematch, but Nunez remains the hunted here at 135. Yeah, and that's I think that's um, part of Shevchenko's MO. I mean, she's always historically been a slow starter, and she gets better as the rounds go on. Oh, she got it! Valentina Shevchenko by submission! She lost a, a decision, a three-round decision in their first fight, but you could see she began to take over the fight in that third round, and she was pouring it on. Right. And so now they're in a five-round fight, you know? And um, I think that that changes the dynamic a lot because Amanda's such a fast starter. Look at those shots! Big right hand from Nunes! You've got to get her out of that first round because um, she just she pours it on. So yeah. two completely different uh, different fighters. And we talked about that third round in the previous meeting between Nunez and Shevchenko being a great source of confidence for Valentina. Well, no greater source of confidence for the champion than disposing of Ronda Rousey in less than a minute. So we'll see how it plays out in the rematch for the UFC Women's Bantamweight Championship. But that's not all, folks. July 8th in Las Vegas. Co-headliner here, Yoel Romero, Robert Whitaker to meet for the UFC's Interim Middleweight Championship. Both guys in outstanding current form, and at least in my opinion, both very deserving of this championship opportunity. Oh, absolutely. It's, a, it's been a long time coming. I'm really, really excited about this fight. Obviously, Robert's been on a tear. I think seven, eight in a row he's yep. won, and um, you know, in very impressive fashion, his win over Jacques Array was incredible. Oh! Massive head kick for Whitaker, and that is it! Robert Whitaker has done it! I think the thing with Romero is he's never out of a fight. You know, I mean, he's, you never know what's gonna happen. He's so incredibly explosive. He doesn't seem to use his wrestling as much as people, I mean, I know he has the accolades, but he doesn't seem to use it as much. He likes to keep it on his feet. He flew at him there, and boom, drops bombs on him. He uses his power, uses his explosion, and it's gonna be interesting, it'll be fun. Can't wait for a very close fight according to the odds makers in Las Vegas. Yoel Romero now 40 years old, 8-0 in the UFC, and if he goes to 9-0, he is the UFC's interim middleweight champion. All right, trilogy to be completed here in the heavyweight division. Fabricio Verdum and Alistair Overeem, they have met twice before, and this is a very big fight, I would imagine, in terms of your vision for this heavyweight landscape. Absolutely, it, it has a, a lot of impact on the division. And, and personally, I think Overeem in his last fight looked better than ever. The last fight, I felt like he was smart. You know, he, he took those angles really well. He stayed in the pocket, he took the center, and I really loved seeing that out of him. So it's gonna be fun to see if he brings that same style against Verdum, who obviously is well-rounded everywhere. You know, it's easy to forget that Verdum is a, a jiu-jitsu guy, right. so to speak. I mean, because his stand-up is so good, his wrestling is good, he's very crafty. Um, so it's kind of an evolution, right? This is the trilogy. It's gonna be great to see where these guys uh, end up. First meeting, if you're curious, Pride 2006. Fabricio Verdum won that fight by submission. Then they met under the Strike Force banner in 2011. That one went to the ream by unanimous decision. So the series to be settled July 8th in Las Vegas. All right, final fight I want to get your thoughts on here. Anthony Showtime Pettis, sort of the forgotten man, now back up to the lightweight division where he has done his most damage. He's lost four of five, though, as he takes on Jim Miller, who only on paper is the winningest lightweight in UFC history. All fighters go through this at some point in their career. You know, and I think he's got, he came to a patch uh, where, you know, he's experimenting, going down to 45. I think he found out that the weight cut was, you know, diminishing returns for him. It wasn't worth it. He's back up at um, 55, and he's the one who really wanted this fight. You know, he called me and was really pushing for it, and you know Jim Miller. I mean, Jim Miller doesn't, doesn't give an F. He's, <laughs> he's a guy that is, will fight anybody any day of the week. It's not even, I mean, you don't even have to call him. Yeah. He'll show up and he was down for this fight. And on paper, it's a really fun fight. You know, Miller's always in, in epic battles. And, you know, Pettis, I still think 
he's, I think that he's still in the prime of his career. I think he's still got it. I think he just needs to find himself again. Jim Miller, 27th UFC appearance already, 17 UFC wins at 155 pounds, the most in lightweight history. So we have stacked the deck, or I should say these two gentlemen have stacked the deck for UFC 213, Nunes versus Shevchenko 2, part of International Fight Week. You can see it all play out Saturday, July 8th, only on pay-per-view. Thank you all for watching the watch list. For Mick Maynard and Sean Shelby, I'm John Anik. We'll see you in advance of UFC 214 later this month.